Praise the Lord. Let's turn today to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Chapter 43. In the King James Bible, we read these words. Ezekiel, chapter 43, verse 27. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day, and so forward, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar, and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. The Jews built the temple, they built the altar, and they had burnt sacrifices on that altar to appease the God that they had so sinned against. That mankind had sinned against the Holy God, so God separated himself a people, the Israelites. And the Israelites built God a temple, and they were God's people, and God was their God. And God commanded them to build an altar and a temple, to offer burnt sacrifices, that as long as they offered these burnt sacrifices to him, as a sweet-smelling Savior, that they would be accepted of him. Sacrificing on the altar would cause God to accept them as a people. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 40. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 40. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them. And there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet Savior when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. He's, God says, I will accept you. I will accept your offerings and your sacrifices, and you will be my people as long as you continue to offer the burnt offerings and the burnt sacrifices to him. But we know that now the temple has been destroyed. Jesus Christ said that this temple will be destroyed. That there shall not be one stone left unturned. Therefore the Jews today are not accepted of God. The Jews today must come to the seed of Abraham, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives Israel a way out. For the Israelites can no longer offer sacrifices. They can no longer be accepted. There is a new way. A new covenant. There is a new promise and a new testament. The testament in the Lord Jesus Christ's blood. Who is that sacrifice? The final sacrifice. For the earthly sacrifices were just a type of the heavenly sacrifice. The sacrifice of the flesh of bulls and goats, bullocks, kids of goats. Those earthly, fleshly sacrifices were a type of the sacrifice that was to come in the future, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who laid down His life for our sins, that all nations might know God. Let's turn to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. My house shall be a house of prayer. But we know that in the time of Jesus Christ, as he went into the temple and he made a whip of cords, that he drove out those money changers in the temple and he cried out, My house is a house of prayer. You see, as long as the Jews offer the sacrifice, they will be accepted of God. But they had profaned that holy place. And Jesus Christ rebuked them, driving them out of the temple. For now there is a new way, a new testament, 
For it says in Isaiah 56, 8, The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel said, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. Let's turn to Malachi. Malachi. Chapter 1, verse 11. Malachi 1, 11. Let me find it here. Malachi 1, 11. For from the rising of the sun, even until the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Another proof that Jesus Christ is the true Messiah is that Jesus Christ gathered all nations unto the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as it is written by the prophets, that God's name would be great among the Gentiles, that God's name would be great among the heathen. Who is that man who made God's name great? It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who brought the nations of the earth to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's Jesus, that Jewish rabbi, who brought all the nations under the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through faith in him. And what he did for them, and for us, Jesus Christ brought the fullness of the Gentiles in, bringing them under the fold, as also God prepared a place for Israel. Now God also makes a way for the whole world, for the Gentiles, to be brought to him. When I was in Vientiane, Laos, changing my visa, when I lived in Thailand, I went to Vientiane, Laos to change a visa, to cross the border for a day or two. And as I was in a cafe with another preacher, we were eating together, and a Jewish man walked by, and we waved him in, and he came in and joined us in the cafe, and one of the things that we were able to explain to him was, even if you don't believe now in Jesus, even if you doubt Jesus, even if you're still in your Jewish religion, you must admit, you must admit that that man, Jesus, fulfilled this promise that the name of God will be great among the Gentiles. For the Jewish people is a small people. There's only 14 million Jews on the whole earth right now. Just a fraction of the population of the earth is Jewish. Yet the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was, his name was made great among the heathen and among the Gentiles of the world. So that now Christianity is said to be the largest religion in the world. More people follow Christianity than any other religion making the prophecies of this book true, that God's name would surely be made great among the Gentiles and among the heathen by a new way, not the way of sacrificing at the temple, for the temple has been destroyed, not the way of offering burnt offerings and sacrifices, but by the one-time sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross, laying down his life to give his disciples and the followers that would follow him wherever he goes, a new way. Let's turn to Acts. Acts chapter 22, verse 4. Paul, the great persecutor of the Christians, when he was Saul, but his name has been changed by Jesus to Paul. And we read in Acts 22, 4, And I persecuted this way unto death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. Paul was a great zealot for the Jewish religion. He followed the way of the sacrifices, the burnt offerings on the altar. And Paul persecuted the new way the Christian way. For before they were called Christians, they were called the way. Jesus Christ says, I am the way. 
There was a new way. The sacrifices on the altar were no longer to be accepted of God when God sent His only begotten Son into the world that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. A new way. And Paul persecuted that way, he says, even unto death. Let's read it again. And I persecuted this way unto death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. But Paul was converted. Paul, a pattern that we should follow. Paul was born again on the road to Damascus when he had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to Paul, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Paul answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest. Paul says, I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering unto prisons both men and women. There is a new way that Paul was persecuting, because he was a devout Jew, and he could not accept that there were to be no more sacrifices if it did not please God anymore, and that he would be used as an instrument of the Lord, to bring that new way unto the Gentiles. That Paul would be used to fulfill the prophecies of this book. That Paul would be the one to carry the gospel to the Gentiles, making God's name great among the heathen, great among the Gentiles, lifting up the name Jesus in the markets, lifting up the name Jesus in the synagogues, lifting up the name Jesus before kings and governors. Let's turn. Psalm 67, Psalm 67, verse 5, let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee, and we read right above that, O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. There is a new way. Jesus Christ made a way for the whole world to come to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus Christ laid down his life for that way. Let's turn to Acts 24. Verse 14. Acts 24, 14. Paul says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He says that after the way which they call heresy, that way, the way where you would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be accepted of God, they called it heresy, the Jews did. And he confesses to the governor that after the way which they call heresy, so worship by the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. For it is written that God would send forth a deliverer, that God would send forth the suffering Messiah, that God would make a new way, that God would bring in all nations of the earth to praise Him. But the Jews, they didn't want that. The Jews didn't want to lose their religious power they had. They didn't want to believe that there was a new way. The Jews worshipped at the temple. Oh, were they in their religion? They loved to make sacrifices. They loved to preach and pray in the synagogues and wear long robes and make long prayers and greetings in marketplaces and upper seats in the synagogues and they loved the respect of men. And they delivered Jesus up to Pilate because of covetousness, because of envy. They envied Jesus. But 
even the high priest of the Jews at that time said it was expedient that one man should die. One man should die for the nation. Because the Jews delivered up Jesus for envy. And Jesus Christ made a new way that the Jews could not accept. Those Pharisees said, Have any of the Pharisees believed on him? No. But Jesus Christ came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus Christ preached the gospel to the poor. He said, Tell John that the gospel is preached to the poor. Let's turn. Let's turn to Malachi. Well, before we go to Malachi, let's turn to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Chapter 2. 2 Peter 2. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now that there's a new way, we have teachers of this way. We have teachers who teach for money. They teach the way of truth for money. And Peter warns that there shall be false teachers among you, who teach things with feigned words, making merchandise of you through covetousness, he says. The way of truth is evil spoken of, because Jesus Christ says straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Jesus Christ gives his disciples commands. Jesus Christ says, abide in me, keep my commandments. He that keepeth my sayings loveth me, Jesus says. He that keepeth not my sayings loveth me not. There is a way that is evil spoken of today by false teachers. This way, the way of truth, which is Jesus Christ and his doctrines, his doctrines which are according to godliness. Blessed be ye poor, loving your enemies, not being a hypocrite, casting out the mold in your own eye, so you are able to cast out the, mold, the, the log in thy brother's eye, not being full of hypocrisy and unrighteousness, not preaching, that men ought not to do this, but doing it themselves anyway, as the Pharisees did. No, Jesus Christ has a way for us to live. His doctrine, and His doctrine is expounded to His disciples on the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached. That is the way. That is His doctrine. But Peter writes, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth is, shall be evil spoken of. And how do you know these false teachers? And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. False teachers are in danger of damnation, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Let's turn to Micah chapter 1, excuse me, Micah 3, 11. Micah 3.11. Let me find it. Micah 3.11. The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof, the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. 
Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Your pastors, your priests, your preachers are preaching for money. They're preaching the way, and that way is evil spoken of. The way that Jesus taught us to live? No. They say, we don't have to live like that. We're saved by grace. We can do whatever we want. Is the Lord not among us? And it says, none evil can come upon us. None evil can come upon us. Whether we sin, whether we fall back, none evil can come upon us. Is not the Lord with us? We preach and teach for money. With feigned words, we make merchandise of you through covetousness. We want more and more, your priests and preachers preach about. They preach about money. They preach for money. And they collect money from you every week. Do they distribute it to the people in need in the church? Or do they keep it for themselves? Because in Acts we read that they laid all that they owned at the apostles' feet. And the apostles distributed to the members of the church as every man had need, and none of them lacked. But the false teachers and the false preachers today preach for money this way. The way of truth is evil spoken of. The doctrines and commandments and even the sayings of Jesus are evil spoken of. We read in Revelation, one of the last things Jesus said, One of the last things Jesus said is, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Are you doing the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you blessed? Or is your false prophet, your false preacher, and your false teacher who teaches for money, teaching you that you don't have to do anything? Just come to church once a week. That's why there's none out there None that I've seen so far in my city that stand and preach the gospel. None that walk about on the streets ministering to the poor. No, there are no disciples of the Lord in the city. When I go out there and preach, I don't see any more. No, all I see is me and my wife. A city of millions of people in a land of millions of professed Christians who are supposedly filled with the Holy Ghost in power. Yet of all those millions of people, there are none out there. None. None to help. Jesus said there is none to help. Let's turn to 1 Timothy. Excuse me. Titus. Titus 1.11. Titus 1.11 We read these words. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. There is a new way that is to be taught, but the teachers aren't teaching it. No, because they're false teachers. They're teaching for filthy lucre's sake. They've decided that they're going to stop working and they're just going to go and live off the tithes of the church. They're just going to collect a salary. They won't work with their hands. They won't hold a job. And in fact, today, even preachers who would be something called a bi a bi vocational preacher, which is a preacher who has a job also, those preachers look down upon. They're not real preachers. They're not real great men of God. No, the bi vocational pastor is looked down upon. When in truth, the bivocational pastor is the only kind of pastor there should be. There should only be pastors and preachers who work with their hands. Let's turn. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 6. Excuse me. 2 Timothy. Timothy 6, 5. Perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, 
supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Your preacher supposes that gain is godliness. Your preacher says if we get a big church, if we add more souls to the bulletin board, if we gain things, then we are godly. But the opposite is true. It says, from such withdraw thyself. You are supposed to get away from those type of preachers, to get away from those type of men, for it says they are corrupt, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Oh, I don't want to leave my church. It's such a beautiful big building. I don't want to leave my church. I know my pastor is no good. I know he preaches for money. I know he makes merchandise of us. But I just want to go to church on Sundays. From such withdraw thyself. Shod your feet with sandals, the preparation of the gospel of peace. And go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Remembering the poor, visiting the fatherless and the widow. This is church. This is fellowship. For the poor are on the streets. The fatherless and the widow need visitations from a man of God or a woman of God. You don't serve the Lord by listening to corrupt men of perverse minds supposing that gain is godliness. In fact, it's a commandment to withdraw thyself from those type of men. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. And my testimony is that being able to work with my hands, being able to do my own business, being able to walk on the streets with my wife, and to be able to preach the gospel publicly, to be able to help the poor, that is giving me great contentment. I've never been so content in my service to the Lord, in my Christian life, as I am when I obey the way. For Jesus Christ is the way. And as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, doing the things in my power that I am able to do for Him, and preaching not for filthy lucre's sake, not supposing that gain is godliness, no, for you see, some of my preaching videos only have four or five views on them. But I continue to preach for you. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but will turn away, keeping to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Let's turn. Let's turn. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 3, Paul, the one who was converted on that road to Damascus, Paul, the great persecutor, Paul, the one, Paul who put people to death, the followers of the way, he put them to death. Paul was converted, and Paul, as the great apostle that he was, the leader of the churches, in Macedonia and East Asia, we read these words, and he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I like to say 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 gives four commands. Four times Paul commands members of the church. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how he ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Paul commands to withdraw yourself from those type of people 
who are disorderly, working, not at all, he says. Let's turn. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 12. Paul writes, If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that at any man should make my glorying void. Let's turn. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 9. Excuse me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example for you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we, here we go, the second time he's commanded in this chapter. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Paul gives commandments in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He commands, let's go through them the last time. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition he received of us. For ye know, for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then there are such we command and exhort you by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat your, their own bread. Paul said to them that are spiritual, that to acknowledge that these things which I command you are the commandments of the Lord. Any man that doesn't work with his own hands is a false prophet and a false teacher, according to 2 Peter. Any man that makes merchandise of you through covetousness, with feigned words, itching your ears, telling you what you want to hear, you are to withdraw yourself from that man, for he is not teaching you the way. For the way of Jesus Christ is to be his disciple, walking and doing the things the way that he taught you to do in the Sermon on the Mount and in Jesus Christ's glorious commandments. And I pray that if you're a pastor or a preacher, or if you're listening to a pastor or a preacher that is making merchandise out of you, or you're one who makes merchandise out of his congregation, that you repent and do the things that Paul commands. 
for the sacrifices at the altar are no longer acceptable to God. The only thing that is acceptable to God is His Son, the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray you'll follow Him. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.